two thoughts, actually, to this uh, question of what works. I'm going to focus on what works. Uh, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a growing body of evidence. I think everyone here is a big fan of evidence. Um, and there's a growing body of evidence around programs that work to achieve women's empowerment. And many of the author, researchers on the stage have contributed to that body of evidence. Um, and uh, I think one of the key takeaways that I've taken from this literature is that we have a lot of evidence in support of what I would call comprehensive programs or comprehensive approaches. And what I mean by that, we've started to build up, I think, a basic model, um, both for women's impact, like rural livelihoods, like the SAG model, but also for adolescent girls. There's beginning to be what I would say is like a standard model that includes some combination of community mobilization, of skills, life skills, um, tr some kind of training, some kind of access to finance, some kind of help to form some income generation, right? And you put all of these pieces together. Um, there's been a lot of evidence uh, from NGO programs, for, uh, the Population Council and BRAC have been really instrumental in this on the adolescent girl space. Um, and then obviously, you know, SHGs in India has been really critical to forming kind of this idea of what a women's livelihood model. So I think, I think what we know works is our comprehensive models. Not all of them, right? And, and there's a lot of criticism about, you know, do they lead to economic empowerment or social empowerment or whatever. But in general, there is a growing body of evidence showing that these comprehensive models work. What I think we don't have and what I think we need more of is understanding how to make these models more parsimonious, right? Because these models cost a lot of money. The per head cost is a lot more than you know, a standard health intervention or than interventions in a lot of other sectors. And I don't think we've done enough to figure out how to make a women's empowerment model more parsimonious. I mean, instead we're actually adding more things onto it, right? Like we're adding, we need to include psychosocial interventions. And I'm a big fan of, I'm always like arguing, no, we need to add a psychosocial intervention. We need to, you know, oh, and don't get me started. We have to engage men and boys, right? Now, if you do a women's empowerment project, Without any engagement of men and boys, like, you know, it'll be considered retrograde. Um, so we keep adding to this comprehensive model and we're not doing enough to try to understand. And again, I think this goes back to what I was saying on the earlier one, to try to start unpacking what it is, how to make that model more parsimonious starts requiring us to look more into this black box of what we mean by empowerment and how to, you know, uh, instead, of, instead of trying to change norms and behaviors and outcomes all at once, we need to start digging more deeply into well, how, how do norms affect behaviors, affect outcomes, and how, does, and how do those outcomes you know, uh, then start to feed back in and change social norms over time. Starting to do more of that digging is what's needed to figure out what could make uh, a model more parsimonious. I know I'm going over. I wanted to make one quick second sure. point about what works. And this is going back to one of uh, Martin Rama's points from this morning. There's a lot of evidence on women-centered programs. And it's actually, it's, I mean, within the bank, and I assume not just within the bank, there's a big debate. And it's been raging at least since the time I've been there, which is 10 years, um, around do we need projects that are women's projects, right? Um, there's actually kind of a, been a little bit of a rebirth at the bank of projects that are proudly named women's empowerment projects. And those had gone out of fashion for a little while. Um, and I think, you know, even for those of us who work on these women's projects, and, I, and, I, and I'm a big fan of them, I think you need them. I think we need a lot more work and evidence on how more neutral, I'm not sure I love the term neutral, but, you know, uh, projects that are not specifically women-centric, right? Things that uh, are um, around uh, facilitating tr trade facilitation projects or electricity or infrastructure projects. Um, uh, we don't have any sense of what the impacts of those are on women's empowerment in a quantitative sense or how those impacts compare to those from more women-centric models. So I think that's where I think we need a lot more. We don't know we, we, uh, around. That's an ongoing question of what we don't know around. Mm -hmm.